Hello everyone, this is Susan Itell with Simple Stamping and today I'm going to share with you a video um, I call it my tips for your Tuesdays and today I'm going to, we're going to talk about conditioning your stamps. Now um, hopefully this video will not be too long and I hope that it will make sense to you. Um, the best advice I can give you is really try it. Uh, I, I find it to be tried and true. I do condition each and every one of my stamps because to me there's nothing worse or more frustrating than not having a good, clean, crisp image. Now, I learned this tip from Jennifer McGuire of an analogy, and I want you to think about it this way. Think about when you get a new pair of shoes how there would be no way you would go to the Mall of America and walk for six hours in a brand new pair of shoes because your feet would hurt. You need to break them in a little bit at a time, right? Well, I want you to think about your stamps in the same way. We have different types of stamp. We have our clear mount, we have our photopolymer, which are the crystal clear, um, and then we also have our wood block. I prefer photopolymer as my stamp of choice, but many a times we do have the red rubber stamps, and I'm going to use this as an example today. You will see that I have not opened this, so we are going to see if this method really works tried and true. As you know, I take one take wonder videos. So this was a card that I had on my blog over the weekend, and um, I thought it was super pretty. The thing I loved about it was I loved how vibrant my colors were. That comes from two things. That comes from conditioning your stamps, and I also think it comes from making sure your stamp pads are inked. Um, it seems like I go through spurts that all of a sudden my stamp pads need to be re-inked. Then there's also times that I've had stamp pads, and I've heard others have, that have too much ink on them and that can be you know just as bad as not having enough so it's kind of you need to find what the balance is but we can go into that later on our main interest today is conditioning stamps now a couple of things I wanted to share with you that I truly believe in um, and at the bottom of the video there will be like a drop down box that you can click I think it says show more I will have the links for any of the products that are not stamping up and actually the ones that are stamping up so um, you can get them if you wish now this to me is I blogged about this before on my tips for Tuesday I think it's called the stampers best friend it is made by Sizzix um, I purchased it on Amazon I absolutely love it I know stampin up has a mat but this one you can see is super thick it has a side for piercing. Honestly, I never use that side. I just use this side for stamping. And to me, it has been a lifesaver. I like it because it's larger in the overall size than what we have at Stampin' Up. And to me, I don't know what to say, but it just does the trick. The other thing I totally believe in, and I have blogged about this before as well, is absorber cloths. Now, absorber cloths are chamois that you can purchase at Walmart or AutoZone. You can get them at Amazon. I can share, share with you a link. This is a great little container I picked up at the container store. Um, it's actually just an onion container. At Bed Bath & Beyond, they have something similar. But all this is is a chamois cloth, and these are clean. I know they look disgusting, but these are clean. And I cut them into sizes that, you know, I find to work for my hand size. And this is how I clean my stamps. True, there are times that I still use my stamp and scrub with a, a stamp cleaner if I feel I can't get into all the nitty gritties. But I have to say, since I've switched to this, to me, this is my new best friend. So that is another tip. And then the other thing for conditioning your stamps is Versamark. Versamark is our watermark stamp that we use when we do embossing and sometimes you can uh, also do tone on tone stamping uh, with Versamark and it works out perfectly but I like Versamark in helping to condition my stamps and no it doesn't make my 
um, stamp pad get icky, you'll see, I'll show you the whole method. And again, I apologize that this is gonna be long, but I think you would rather get the idea than um, have me miss a couple steps. So that is Versamark. We carry that at Stamping Out. Now, I always keep, these are discontinued papers. Do you remember this, Blackberry Bish, Bliss? And here you can see, um, on my blog today, I used uh, this stamp set. This is how I conditioned that stamp because that was a really big stamp. So we are going to, let's first start with a clear mount stamp, which I know it's super confusing. Clear mount still means that it's red rubber. We use this one, this floral. And you have to mount it on a um, block. Now, I swear hats off to you guys that can get straight images i seem to always be very challenged but i do not put my sticker on there i find that they stick a lot better onto my acrylic blocks when i do not um, have that and getting back to the point of straight stamping i use my stamp on a jig a lot but i also have a misty tool and if we have enough time, I will share with you what the Misty tool is. So this is a brand new stamp. This is how I condition it. I first clean it. I just really, really clean it. I think, gosh, if there's any residue from manufacturing or any dust or dirt that's in there, just go ahead and get it clean. And you can hear, can't you hear it squeaky? So it's squeaking. And this again is just damp. Um, I have so many of those little pieces and I keep a bin of them and then I throw them in my wash machine and use them again and again. So it's sometimes I'll take my hand to it just to make sure that it's dry. And then you're going to take it to Versamark. Now, because this is a larger stamp, I think I would take my Versamark down to it. And then simply all I do, let's take a piece of scrap paper, is I take a piece of scrap paper and first stamp it and give it a test to see if it's going to stamp really well. And actually, let me pull that up. Actually, that stamped really well on the first time. Now, another trick that I like to do is it still has the Versa mark on it. I sometimes will take it and then squish it. Just kind of rub your stamp around. Um, I don't know why, I just think it kind of gets into the creases and conditions it even more. So we've done that. So out comes my chamois. And you're going to think, gosh, Susan, this takes a long time. But once you get into the habit of doing it, I'm telling you, you will not go back to not conditioning your stamps because you'll always get a great image. So a lot of times I will do this. I'm going to go back and this time I'm going to kind of lightly take my verse to mark. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to give it a stamp. And actually that turned out pretty well. Now, let's go ahead and get some ink. Now, I'm not even going to clean that. It's okay. It's not going to contaminate your ink. Um, this is, what is this? Emerald Envy. And let me pull in a piece of white paper. So, hopefully, we're going to get a really pretty stamp. And we're going to go ahead and stamp it. Now, with these stamps, you're going to be able to see really clearly if you have enough ink on it, especially when you're working with a dark ink. If you're working with the pink pirouette or the so saffron, it is kind of hard, I admit. So let's see how we did. We're going to just, this is just our regular whisper white paper. And we're going to give it a stamp and see if we have a good image. And look, I think that one actually is pretty good for the very first time. And I think you know what I mean, because sometimes your very first couple times that you stamp with a stamp, you don't get a good image. And so that is frustrating to many of you. And trust me, I get it. I've been there, been there, been there. And do you hear me tapping? Oh shoot, I hope the camera's not just jumping around. But I do tap my stamp set and we're gonna try it again. And I really believe that you have to stamp a fresh stamp at least two or three times in order to get a really good image. And there you go, look at that, it's perfect. It is a good, solid, solid image. So now all I would do is I would take my absorber, clean it, 
and we are done. That is it. And then back into the case it goes, and I will share with you, most likely you're not gonna have to condition that again. If you stamp an image and it's not great, go back and do the set steps that I just shared with you. Now, let's get to a photopolymer. Here's another stamp set that I have yet to use, which I'm going to this week. I think it's a really beautiful um, hostess stamp set. It's called Thankful Life, and we're going to use that larger image because that's where a lot of times, and you can see this is brand spanking new, that is where a lot of times we have issues is when we have a flat image that is, um, very flat like this. So again, I go through the exact same step. I take a um, something to clean it, and I really, really clean it good because I, I do think that the photopolymers sometimes have uh, more of a film on them. And I want you to also not be so hard on your stamps. Think about it this way. Every stamp stamps a little bit differently. You know, it's just like, you might buy a pair of shoes from one company and then go back six months later and buy another pair of sneakers and they just feel a little bit differently. Same things go with our stamps. I think sometimes we need to condition our stamps more um, than other stamps. Sometimes we are good to go right from the beginning. And again, I hope my camera isn't shaking around. So let's go back to the Versamark and we'll pull in a piece of darker paper for you to see. And we're going to just stamp that in Versamark. And let's see how we did. Actually, that's not really that bad at all. And again, you have to remember too, our inks dry um, over time. So you're going to get a truer image, you know, once it has enough time to dry. But let's do it again, because I am super, I understand that these big ones really do frustrate you because I do it all the time. Now we're gonna take this one and let's squish it. Squish it around. Okay. Now let's take it to the test. We're just gonna flip this piece of paper over and let's use Watermelon Wonder. And the good thing about the photopolymer is you can really see, I like to kind of rock them back and forth you can really see if you have pretty good coverage. And also the great thing about photopolymer is you can double stamp them. So go ahead and stamp it. And there you go. And I want to tell you, if we were here long enough to show you and to wait, you might see a little bit of shading right there where it looks a little bit darker or that might look a little splotchy to you. It will be completely gone. Because like I said, sometimes our inks need to have a little bit of time to be able to dry. So I hope that that made sense to you and, and you will condition your stamps because it, it just makes life so much easier. So let's go ahead and clean this one off. Actually, I was really happy with that because that was a pretty big image. And again, when I say I take one takes, you know what, while we're here, let's go ahead and do the thankful to do a sentiment so you can see that. I treat the sentiments the exact same way. You're going to put it on your block, take your chamois or your cleaner, however you care to clean your stamps, and give it a really nice and good cleaning before we get going. Do the same trick. I always use my Versamark. And this month, um, this video is actually February 14th, 2017. With every purchase of $75 or more on my store, I will send you a um, fresh Versamark. Uh, I think Versamark is, is a product that we use absolutely all the time. And I will say uh, you can purchase a refill, but sometimes I think, you know, it's like getting a new white shirt. You need to update things every once in a while. And there's nothing wrong with having a fresh um, Versamark pad. Okay, let's go to our archival black ink. Do you all love this as much as I do? I think it is just a fabulous black ink. 
And again, you can see that I haven't even cleaned it in between after I stamped it with the Versamark, and that doesn't bother me at all. I'm not concerned at all about it. So we're gonna stamp up the thankful, just going up and down. And let's just go ahead and press it. And look at that, perfect. There you go. You can see how you get a perfectly clean and crisp image. And you can also see how this vase is drying and it's looking really good. Now true, if you have a dark ink, it's going to stain your photopolymer. Um, truth be told, when photopolymers first came out, that used to totally stress me. And um, really, that means it's a great stamp set. So you want that staining of it, and it does not affect whatsoever the quality of your um, stamp. So let me just toss that back in. Now real quick, I'm gonna pull in what a MISTI is. This is a MISTI. This is a stamping tool that Stamping Up does not sell. I can link, um, you can go into Amazon. You can. It's made by My Sweet Petunia. It is a stamp positioner and it is the bomb. It is just fabulous for especially um, clear, the photopolymer stamps. Now, for those of you, I'm going to share a trick with you. For those of you that have one of these old stylus and who have a MISTI, you know that picking up these magnets can be a real pain sometime. Um, that's why I put washi tape on them to have like a little handle. But I will tell you this, if you have one of these old pokey tools, how about that? I love this. I discovered that one day and it saves my nails. Truth be told, I'm very picky about my nails. So it does save my nails. So basically with a um, stamp of, I mean with a Misty, you would go ahead and just put your um, cardstock in and then place a magnet wherever you, I like to use, I use more magnets than you probably need. We'll go ahead and pull back out that thankful. I guess I put it away a little bit too early. And the good thing about this is it's already dark um, because of the black ink. So all you would do is place your stamp or your whatever you're working with um, onto your piece of paper and then you just simply shut the door, give it a little bit of a press there, and look, it picks up. Is that the coolest thing? So the reason why it's called Misty, it's for the most amazing stamping tool invented. So we're gonna go ahead and ink up over here. And I didn't do a super job, and I'll show you why. So you just press it down. Actually, that wasn't that bad of a job, but I'm gonna show you how you can do it another time if you wanted something to look darker. Or if you, you know, had that stamped image that just wasn't to, to your liking, where you just missed, you know, part of the T or the F, you can just go ahead and re-stamp it and look at that. Is that just wonderful or what? It is so cool. It just makes life so easy. And again, what I do is I just, you know, clean off my stamp just like I would normally do. Pick it up, put it away, and I am good to go. So I hope that you found this to be a very useful video. Um, I would appreciate it if you would share my videos with your family and friends. And if you would love to subscribe, I do plan to continue to do more videos. But I do hope that you found this helpful. And please do not hesitate to contact me if you have any questions or comments. Thanks for sticking in there with me and have a great day.